particular tonight, Ember and Native Oak Components are coming later in the summer. Uh, one housekeeping thing, next month we're not meeting. Next Thursday, first Thursday will be the 4th of July, and I'm sure everybody has other plans, uh, so go enjoy those. Uh, but we have Tommy here today, he's from Zoom, and he's going to be talking uh, to us about how to build a to do app in Angular. So as I only met him a moment ago, I don't have too many things to say about him, so without uh, further ado, Tom, yeah. thanks for being here, cool. and uh, teach us Angular. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so a little background about me. My name is Tommy Gessler. Uh, I went to Galvanize. I know there's some other food campers in here. Went to Galvanize, uh, finished December 2016, uh, then got hired at a startup called Apostrophe. They're an industry rhino just across the street. And uh, I was a third employee and then went from uh, to like about 50 employees and uh, two and a half years, and then, then I joined Zoom. So uh, we can jump into it here. And um, you might be saying, like, I'm a developer advocate at Zoom. Like, I don't see front end anywhere. I don't see Angular anywhere. Well, um, I, at, at Apostrophe, I um, was the sole front end developer using Angular. On the, and on the first day, like they said at Galvanize, hey, you're never going to have to build a, like, a code base from scratch and implement any authentication early on. Like, they'll just be fixing the bugs for a few months, this and that. And so I, I get in on the first day, and the CTO says, pick a language, pick a front end language, and code like authentication. And I was like, so I picked Angular, uh, hadn't done it before, learned it from scratch, and then uh, ended up building like four of our products, had a Bashri on it, and like having a ton, ton of customers, and, and seeing that go from literally nothing to something. So this is what we're going to build today. Uh, it's pretty fancy, so I hope you can get through it all. <laughs> And uh, how many people are coding along? Just raise your hand. I was going to ask, is it, I mean, is it worth it? Is it going to be? Yeah, I mean. I mean I, I, I'm a sure. crappy typer. <laughs> yeah. For, so so I'm, text for a living. Yeah, so I'm going to basically be coding it. And so if you want to follow along, you could. But I'll be going fast-ish. OK. Um, and at the end, I'll like send out the completed code repo. Okay. Um, but if you want to code along or watch, it's up to you. But you could definitely do it. And, and we can, you know, you can like pause me if I'm going too fast and stuff. Um, so yeah, this is what we're going to build today. Uh, the functionality, you can add it to do, and then uh, you can check it off to the in progress. Like you can mark it as completed, and then you can delete it. So three functionalities there. And just quick differences between Angular and React. Uh, Angular uses uh, the regular DOM. Um, and then it updates the entire tree structure of HTML tags when the changes are made. But React, the reason why it's been so fast, which you might already know, is it uh, uses a virtual DOM and only um, updates, like only the changes that happen, um, uh, the updates that happen on the HTML tags, um, that's, it doesn't update the whole DOM, so I'm fair to say. Obviously, you can tell I'm not a React developer. So uh, companies that use Angular, Google, obviously, because they created it, so Google's back. Uh, Nike, HBO, and then uh, Facebook uh, created React, and then Airbnb, Netflix, and other popular companies use it. Uh, and then they both have uh, mobile native uh, like capabilities. So for Angular, Ionic, and Cordova, you can turn it into a mobile app, put it on the Android app store, uh, the Apple app store, and then for React, React native uh, on the respective app stores there too. And then here's kind of an interest over time of the uh, two languages, the blue being React, the red being Angular. And so you can see React grew pretty fast here, um, and Angular, and, and they've both been kind of like similar here. Um, so both widely widely used. So this is me coding React. I've tried before, and I just cannot do it. <laughs> so, so then I switched to Angular, and I was an expert. So uh, it took a while, but uh, I just like the product structure better, and do you want to announce the, the Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi, yeah. yeah. Is, where is it? it? On that sheet oh, that's yeah. pasted, it's okay, Padawan so it's, for the network. So the Wi-Fi name is Padawan, and the password is Welcome to Code. Let me know when gets that. Good. Yep. Cool. So what we're going to cover today in the hour that we have is uh, the material design styling framework, uh, which you've probably seen around uh, the web. It's pretty popular and it's super nice. And then Angular components. 
services and then pipes. And we're not going to cover tonight any of the native mobile desktop uh, functionality, uh, routing, and testing. So let's get into it. Let's go. So is this big enough? This, this should be good. So first, everyone, uh, go to angular.io if you're coding along. And then once you're there, we're going to click on Docs. And then on the left side, we're going to click Setup. And then um, I'm assuming you already have Node and NPM installed. So in your command line, uh, or in your terminal, copy and paste this line here, npm install dash g adds angular slash cli. And what this is going to do is going to install the angular command line interface where we can easily create um, angular apps and different parts of our apps. So I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, next step is to create a new app with the command ng new and then name it whatever you want. I'm going to name mine to do. Is that big enough for you all with the, with the terminal? Let's do that. So I'm going to click enter. And then we're going to be greeted with a few options here. And like I said in the slides, we're not going to actually go over any of the routing tonight. So I'm going to click no, enter. And then we have a few um, different options for choosing uh, like our, our CSS. We can do CSS, SCSS, SAS, LAS. I'm just going to do straight up CSS. Enter. And then it'll create the app for you. It'll get init, npm init, install um, all the dependencies. So that's what it's doing right now as uh, it's loading here. Am I going too fast or slow? Is there? Are there options to like set up your own tooling by yourself? And, like, I'm sure there do. are, but I haven't done any of that yet. Oh, I was wondering if, if Google is like mandating this, or if, if, if there's if right. yourself. Yeah, I'm... Not that I would want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, the easiest way to get it set up is this, but um, there's like a lot of custom, uh, custom uh, ability you could do with it. But I don't know that answer. So um, now if we type, uh, if we look at our... Uh, folders here in our like code product directory, we can see that we have a to-do app. So I'm going to cd into it. And we can see all these pretty files. So I'm going to open it in Atom. That's my uh, text editor that I use. And here it is. So this is the, I'll just go over the basic project structure real quick. Could you uh, make that larger? Yeah, I don't know how to make the sidebar bigger. Does anyone know how to make the sidebar bigger? Mm -hmm. Probably have to change your resolution command, here. Command plus. Yeah, that's not doing. You could. You can. Uh, like I can create. Like you can like zoom the whole thing if you open oh, no, up accessibility settings. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know if you want to do I don't know how to do that. So <laughs> just bear with me here. Um, <laughs> see, like the file itself is like full of Shut up. So um. Are you serious? So you might recognize the package.json file. That's a familiar JavaScript React file. Um, and everything else is probably going to be foreign to you. And so you don't need to touch anything else here. And then uh, this E2E file here, or a folder here, is where you, your end-to-end -end tests live. We're not going to touch any of that. Uh, we're going to open the source file. And then you'll see some more familiar files, um, the index.html. And then this is where your uh, project like lives. This is the base of it. And then right here, this app-root, that's where um, all the Angular that's where the Angular app lives. And then uh, we have a global CSS file here as well. So, and then if we open the app folder, we're mainly going to be working inside of here. And we have a CSS file, an HTML file, a uh, test file, which we're not going to touch, our component file, and our modules file. And I'm going to make this a little smaller so I can work with it. OK. Cool. So the first thing we're going to do is create a component called uh, to do. So I'm going to do ng gc to do. So what this is going to do is it's going to, it's saying like Angular, generate a new component, and I want to call it to do. Oh, actually, um, I'm going to say components slash to do. So this is actually going to create a folder called components, and then uh, the component will be called to do. And I'm going to hit 
enter. And then you can see here it created a few files. So if, we, so if you look inside, um, we see this components folder and then a to do component. So every component comes with a CSS file, an HTML file, a test file, and then a, the TypeScript file, which is like you know JavaScript where your logic and your, your code would uh, go in. So in order for this to show up, actually, yeah, let's, let's uh, server application first. So let's type in ng serve dash dash open. And this is going to serve our Angular app on their server and build it everything and then do live reload and then also open it in the browser for us on localhost 4200. So here's what it looks like just out of the box. And we're gonna go ahead and delete that. So if we go into the app.component HTML file, I'm just gonna command A and delete. One of my favorite things to do is just delete code. And then in the <laughs> app.component file, I'm also gonna delete the title there. Okay, then in this app component file, um, this is where, this is like the base of our project. And so if we wanna add our component here, we're gonna do this. Actually, let me show you like what it looks like. So if we go to the todo.component.ts, we see our, the selector is app-todo. And so we can um, add that here as an HTML tag. And then that'll link this to this component. So now um, to do should show up, and here it is. To do works, let's change that to an h1 tag, and let's add like the title of our app, Angular to do app. Cool. So now, if we think about what we need for a um, Angular, or for a, a to do list app, we need an input and we need a button. Simple as that. So let's start doing that. I'm just going to create a basic input, and then I'm going to create a basic button. And then we'll add a placeholder to this that says to do. So if we didn't want to do any styling or anything, our app would look like this. And it's kind of ugly, right? Like we don't want to just use the native styles for these. So we're going to go to uh, the Material Framework website. It's material.angular.io. So it's the official Angular uh, front end styling framework and backed by Google again. So once we're here, we're gonna click get started. And then we're gonna follow these easy steps. And I'm gonna um, close out my, I'm gonna cancel my server here because so we can uh, npm install these things. Um, so I'm gonna paste in this first npm install. This is gonna install Angular Material, the CDK, and the animations. And that's step one. So then I'm gonna jump to step two. Is that global or is that? It's uh, local to your project. See this dash dash save here? So that's actually local and it'll save in your package JSON. So if you want to put it up to GitHub or someone else wants to run this, all they have to do is do a game install and save it. Okay, so then we'll move down to step two. And it says um, imports, or we want to be able to configure animations. So in order to do that, I'm going to copy and paste this top line here. And then I'm going to go over to my code into the app.modules. And I'm going to paste it right in here the browser animations module. So this will allow us to have uh, like our, our um, material components animate in Angular 3. So we want to import it there, and then we also want to import it here under the browser module. So this is an array, so add a comma, and then we're going to import it here. Once we do that, let's go to step three. So step three, we're actually going to skip, and then we're going to go down to step four, where we include a theme. So Angular, I think, has about six pre-built themes, or you can create your own. We're not going to go over creating your own tonight. Um, but you can click this theming guide to create your own. So it says to copy and paste this import um, CSS file into your styles.css, which is the styles.css file here. I'm going to save it. This is our global file. So you can kind of look at the path here. It's actually looking in our node modules and then going into uh, Angular and finding the theme there. So once we do that, um, we can add gesture support. It's optional. It's for uh, mobile, like if you are using it on your mobile browser, uh, you can do some uh, gestures. And then step six, uh, add material icons. We're going to do this, because who doesn't love icons? 
So copy and paste this into your index file. Like that. So that should be the last step there. Now, let's make our input, our button, and our uh, inputs way, way better. So I'm going to click on input here. And this is what it's going to look like. Obviously, we're not doing favorite food. We're doing to-dos. But um, we are going to make our input look like this. So the first step, this step we skipped, I think it was step three, um, is importing each uh, material component that you want. So I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to click API, copy and paste this line here, and go to the app.modules again. This is where we'll uh, put in all of our node modules, our NPM, you know, things we can sell with NPM to make our app work. And then I'm going to copy and paste this map input module into our list of modules here. And you know it goes here because it says module, says module, says module. And then, this is key, I'm going to delete this input there because we're going to Im import um, multiple of these. And so if we like keep it just as slash input, it's not going to work. But if we just target slash angular material, then it'll be able to import them all. Awesome. So now, um, I'm going to click view source, and then I'm literally just going to copy and paste this code here into my project, instead of having that other input. And then I'm going to I'm going to delete this. You don't have to. I'm going to change the placeholder to to do, and then I'm going to delete the value of it. Now let's see if this shows up. Refresh. Oh yeah, restart your server. Ng serve. How's everyone coding along? Good? Good. Cool, so here it is, look. It's super fancy. I can click in it, it goes up and down. You know, you can type, let's add the button. So instead of this, I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna move over to Angular Material. And then, um, this is basically like shopping. Like, what do we want to use? Okay, here, button. I wanna see examples of it, cool. So we can choose which buttons to use. I usually like to do the raised ones here. So then I'm gonna click view source. And then I'm gonna copy and paste the second one here. But you can do any um, style of button you want. And then instead of primary, I'm gonna say add. And this color primary here is gonna choose a color from your angular styles that we imported here. So we don't really need to worry about that. It'll just happen behind the scenes. Um, so, if we go back, it's actually not going to look any different because we have to remember to click API and then now just copy and paste the map button module um, and then we're going to add that in that module TS. Boom. So I'm importing it again from material. So I have two imports now and then I'm adding it also to the app imports. Now we should see the fancy button and there it is. Pretty cool, right? All right, so now we want this to actually do something. Can you, do you mind uh, yeah. just on uh, going to your files that have the imports, making sure, does everybody have all the imports in place? So if you want to <laughs> stay on there. <laughs> yeah, I'll slow down there. I have a tangential question, Tommy. Mm -hmm. You're importing all these modules, comes with Angular, awesome. Mm -hmm. You're also, I think, using global class names to like pull some styles down, it seems. But I also saw when you made the component that there are these component CSS files. Right. And I'm just curious if that seemed like a default locally scoped CSS file, Good question. perhaps? Yeah, so this, you're talking about like this CSS file? Yeah, and that was not a leading question. I genuinely don't know. Uh, uh, like, is that a component that is supposed to be locally scoped by any sort of build process or convention? Yeah, so this comes down, like every component you make, remember we did the NGGC uh, name, so it ships with an empty CSS file, and the cool thing about this is you can apply uh, CSS files in this, or CSS styles in this file that's just specific to this component. So if we had a different component here, um, it would come with a different CSS file and we could add different styles to that and it would just affect that. 
and then this global CSS file, I say global because it's like global to your project, would override this one if you wanted to. Um, and then also you wouldn't have to specify like which component you wanted to do. So for example, if you wanted to change the font size of your whole project, you would put it in here and not in here because this would only change the font size inside of this HTML file. And I, like, I'm just curious, are those like truly locally scoped in that if I use two different, the same class name mm -hmm. in two different components but have different styles, yep. those would not be affected? No. Cool. So they would be different cool. if you find it differently. So, which we can see here, let's add some CSS. Uh, I'm gonna go to styles.css and then I'm gonna add a name, uh, elements here, and I'm gonna say uh, width 70% and then margin auto. And I wanna just center our project, give it some uh, spacing. And um, inside of here, actually inside of here, let's add a main class that wraps this, or not a main class, a main uh, tag there. So now if we go back, we should see some space. See how we got a little more space? And now I know for sure inside of here, I want to center this uh, h1 tag. So in this component style, I'm going to say text align center and then it's gonna center it. But I also wanna um, center, or I wanna make this uh, form field 100% width. So I'm gonna say width 100%. And then that'll push the button down, and now it's looking more like um, what, we, what I showed you. So, but um, I only did that, because what if I have another component within each one and I didn't want it to be centered? So it's, it's specific to this. All right, so now once we have this, we want this form here to actually do something. So let's go to our todo.component.ts and I'm gonna wrap our input and our button into just a simple form tag. Like this. And then in here, um, we can use the Angular submit function to add a to do. And now in order to use this, uh, this Angular submit function, we have to add a few more node modules, or a few more modules. We don't have to um, actually download them. They're already built in with Angular, but by default, they're not in this file. So we're gonna import the forms module, and then the, the reactive forms module from at Angular slash forms. And then make sure to also add them to browser animations module, so they're before the uh, material ones. That shouldn't matter, but I just do it as a reference. Okay, cool. So notice how we have um, this function here, this add to do function. We're gonna also add that in our uh, uh, TypeScript component, because they're connected. When I submit this button, it's gonna call this function, which will do code and do actions in here. So. As a sanity check, let's say console.log high, and let's see what happens. I'm just gonna click the button, boom, it says high right here. So we know now our form is somewhat connected to our TypeScript file. Um, but now we wanna be able to like type in here and then be able to add it and show high, so let's do that next. Um, so with Angular, there's a lot of importing things. So we're gonna import a few more things here. And this is going to be in your to-do.component to as well. Did you have a question there? Well, just that if you're putting these types of uh, these functions in this component file, you could just the same do if you wanted like globally accessible ones in that app, right? If could this component access a function that you put in in, uh, in the app level? Uh, yes, it could. Yeah, in some cases it could, in some cases it wouldn't. Um, I'll have an example of that later. Cool. If you want to just keep coding along. So I, I imported a form group and then a form builder here. So then um, inside of your constructor, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, set up this uh, form group. So we're gonna say to do form, uh, and we're gonna assign it a type of uh, form group. Like this, and then in here, I'm gonna say, Form builder, and I'm going to put this as a lowercase f. 
So when you're, uh, so notice we imported a uh, form builder here, and then in order to use it in our app, in like an instance of it, we're gonna um, declare this variable and assign it to a type of form builder. And so in here, we're gonna say to do form equals, uh, oops, this dot to do form equals form builder. Oh, it's a one second, let me reference my code. Bear with me, this is my first um, live code along, so. So we're gonna do form builder dot group, and then we're going to assign name, and I'll explain what this is in a second. So basically, I'm creating a JavaScript object or TypeScript object um, that we're going to attach to our form, and um, we're giving it a name because our to-do has to have a name, and then our to-do needs a state of either completed, true, or false. So that's how I'm going to do that, and then we're going to also add this or add a line of code into our input here. So I'm going to say form control equals uh, to-do form. So now our uh, this input is now binded to this form variable. Um, so now instead of just console logging hi, we can console log this dot to do form dot value, and then this will be the value of our form. So I'm going to say hello, and then here we see we have an object, JavaScript object, completed equals false name hello. So now um, that's our to-do, so we're sending something to the DOM and we're accessing it um, you know, from the UI to the TypeScript file. But now we want to display it here, right? We want to display our to-dos. Um, so let's add that code. So if you think about how you should um, like format this data, we want to, each one of these is an object. So we want to create an array and uh, to hold all of our to-dos. So let's do that. I'm just going to create a variable here called to-dos. And with uh, TypeScript, um, it's kind of like Java or a strictly type language where you assign it a type. So basically I'm saying in this to-dos array, I'm expecting an array of objects. And it's optional to do this. You could just do this, basically code JavaScript in here, but um, you know, all the Angular experts would want to get on me for that. So, um, so in here, in this add to-do, I'm going to say this.todos.push. Uh, this to do form value. So now um, our to do's array will be updated with that to do. And then in here, I'm just going to create a simple ordered list. And then um, with Angular, there's a built in uh, looping uh, system. So we can loop in our, our HTML. So I'm going to say let. Uh, So it's basically a for each function. And then I'm going to say to do dot name. So this should show up if we have any to do's, and then it should display the name of it. So let's try it. Test. Add. Boom. There's our first one. And then I could add another one, like take out the trash. Boom. Done. So now um, we want to be able to say, hey, uh, I want to click like the checkbox, and then I want to have it be in the completed state. So we're going to need two columns for that. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of CSS in my styles.css file. I'm going to make the simplest grid you'll ever see in your life. Display flex, and then I'm going to have a column uh, flex one. So now I'm here. Let's go up a little. I'm going to say H2 in progress, and then it'll, you know, we just put that there. So we just got to make our, our grid first, class row, and then to class home. And then let's say, let's just do this, and then come on down, come on top this, and this will be completed. 
columns. So now we should see two columns, in progress completed. When I add a to-do, it'll show up here. So now I want to add a checkbox to this, so when I click this, it'll go, it'll jump to completed. And so to do that, let's go shopping again on Angular Material, and we're going to choose the checkbox. And the checkbox is pretty dope, so we're going to add it to our modules. A lot of copy and pasting, that's why um, I like this framework so much because it's fast and you can have uh, good looking items. And so here's the uh, checkbox, but inside of here, we don't want check me, we actually want the name of our to do. So I'm going to have that there. And go back. Now, when I say test, we're going to have test with a little checkbox. And obviously, this checkbox doesn't do anything yet, so we're going to make it do something. So in here, we can add a function called change. And then we can say to do dot completed. So I'm saying like for each instance of to do in the completed state, I want to assign it to the opposite of itself. Kind of confusing, but um, that's how we can do that. And then I'm going to do something fancy here actually. I'm going to add this piece of code. This is a, you know, like it looks like an HTML tag, and it is with Angular, but it's strictly for logic, and it won't show up in the DOM at all. And then here I'm going to say ng if uh, to do dot completed. And of course, in coding, there's many different ways you can do things like this, um, but for the sake of time, I'm going to do this. And then here I'm going to say if it's here is I'm going to add a bang there. It's not completed, it'll show up in this list. If it is completed, it'll show up in this list. And then, uh, let's see how it works. Boom, test. So if I click it, it'll jump around. How fun is that? But it doesn't, like when I click it, it should be checked, right? So we can add a um, attribute here called selected, and it's it takes in a, um, a Boolean. And so here, I want to say, I want this to be, you know, checked if it's selected, and we can put the same logic there. So it should be selected if the to do if the to do is completed. So we, look, we got an error. Checked. Cool. For every error I have, you have to take a step here. <laughs> All right. So now when we check it, it'll show up. Pretty cool. So next steps, let's. Um, I'm going to do the local storage part last if we have time. But uh, let's um, add in the delete functionality because we want to be able to delete our functionality. Actually, also another nice thing. Um, so say I add it to do like uh, show to me now. It doesn't clear this form here, which would be annoying because every time I'd have to delete it again. So let's clear out that form. So on submit, when we add it to do, let's clear it out after we push it into the array. So I'm going to say this dot to do form dot So it's pretty simple, and the Angular forms are really powerful, um, and you can do a lot of functionality with them. So there, I just added it, and it went away. Another annoying thing is having all these autocomplete things here. Uh, I'm also going to add some code that will prevent that here. If I do autocomplete, off. Pretty cool, right? Now it doesn't show up. So I can say go to meetup, hit enter, boom, it's there, this clears out, and then I can check it when it's done. Okay, so now let's add um, a delete button. Is there a, uh, a rule for the inline of listeners, like ng submit versus just change? Yeah, so... Like why is not it ng change? Right. Um, good question. It depends on what um, element you're using. And uh, like some have, some can do ng change, some can't. So you just gotta make sure. I don't know why that's the case, but um, some of them are different. But like it would make sense, right? Like this is 
this convention has ng submit in front of it, whereas this one has change. So there's like some weird Angular things around that. Um, is, is that change something that's being passed specifically to the material checkbox? Whereas the ng submit is like an Angular wide thing? Yeah, so this is this is Angular. Whenever you see a action here with these paren around it, that is Angular. Okay. Because I know in native JavaScript you can do a similar thing and add change. Like you can do like on change, I think, or like on click. Um, but yeah, this is an Angular uh, thing. And then in the uh, material framework, if you wanted to dig a little deeper, you could click API and it actually shows um, a, lot of, a lot of the different functions that can be attached to it. Or um, uh, like there's the checked one that we used. So there's more details here if you wanted to dive in. Okay, so now we want to add a, a button where we can delete uh, checkboxes. We're also we'll just have, or uh, delete to do's. We'll also we'll have a never ending list of to do's. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to the buttons here, and I'm going to look and I want to use an icon button. So one of these, but a trash can. So let's look at the code. I can see icon buttons. I'm going to grab, just grab just the basic one here. And this is going to be a heart at first, but we're going to change it. So I'm going to put that one outside of the material checkbox because otherwise, if I clicked it, it would just check it instead of delete it. But it, whoops, but it's still in the list item here. So I'm going to put one there, and then I'll allow you to delete uncompleted and completed ones too. Oops. Okay, I'm going to delete this just for the sake of. And then um, if we look, if we go to, again, with the like Google-backed products here, material.io, um, there's a list of icons here. And this is uh, what we imported in our, uh, this is what we imported in our index.html, that link uh, is linked to this repository of all these icons. So it says delete right here. That means we can just pop it in right here as delete. And then we have to do one more thing. We have to go back to Angular Material, click Icon, and then import the mapped icon module. So it's getting kind of annoying to do that every time. So, um, but again, it's saying lightweight. Before they would import all of this, and people would complain that it was just really heavy and it would load slow. And so now the other way around, you got to do a little more, more work, but kind of slide away. So we do test. Boom, we have a little trash can icon. And we want it to actually delete. So a good example of how Angular's uh, two-way data binding work are if I click on this button, let's add a click event to it. And then also I'm going to add in this ng4, uh, just like a JavaScript for each function, we can have, we can pass in the second argument. So like the first being, this is the uh, item of that, uh, you know, array. Um, the second will be the index of it. So this is pretty cool. So I'm gonna do this. So I would be the index of each item in the array. And then in here, I am literally going to do to do's dot, I'm gonna type JavaScript in here, splice. So this, when you click on this, it should delete the instance of itself. And everyone probably knows what Splice does. Um, but it, it will actually change this to-do's array. So anything we do in here will actually like you know, update it here. So that's an example of the, the two-way data binding. So let's add a bunch of these. That's one, uh, go to meetup. Cool, so we have two, went to the meetup. Let's delete it, it's gone. I don't want to do this one, delete it, it's gone. So pretty cool. All right, now um, we still have 20 minutes, so let's save the state of this, because you're going to have to leave your browser open forever <laughs> and not refresh if you wanted this to do list to stay the same. So I'm going to open a terminal tab, and then I'm going to add a cool um, Angular feature called a service. I'm going to say ng g service service being the type of thing I'm creating via the command line, and then making a little project structure here, slash services, and then I want this to be state. Cool, so I've created two files, let's go check them out. Folder here, services, a test file, and then a state 
service file, which is where um, we are going to do the database logic, which we're going to use localhost. But using the service, we could easily switch out localhost for like a MongoDB or a, any sort of DB there. So um, after I add a to do, well, first let's uh, let's create some functions here. So we're going to make a getter and a setter. Uh, our getter will be called get to do. Pretty simple. And then our setter will be called set to do. And this is going to take in all the to dos. Okay, cool. So first of all, let's do the set to do. And I'm going to say local storage dot set item. And I'm going to call it to dos in local storage. And then I'm going to json.stringify the to dos. So local storage can only take stringified values, so we're going to stringify it. And um, after I add it here, um, so after I add this to do, so we add it to our to do's array, and then I'm going to pass in that to do's array to our state service, so then it falls into here, and then it gets added to local, local host, or sorry, local storage. So in order to do that, instead of importing the service, we need the service and the component file to talk to each other. To answer your question, Michael, in uh, order for that to happen, we're not going to import it into here because I just wanted to talk to this component file. We're just going to import it directly into our component. So we're going to say import state service. Also add it to our constructor so we can use it. I'm going to say public state service equals state service. Awesome. So now in here, I will say this dot state service dot set to do this dot to do's. So this will pass in every time we add one, it'll pass in um, our to do's array into the state service, which will add it uh, to local storage. And now on init, this is kind of like in React uh, or on component mount. This is the first function that will just be called automatically when you navigate to that component page. Um, here, I'm actually going to define to do's as what I get from local storage. So I'm going to say this dot to do's equals state service dot get to do. I should have made that to do. So I'm going to change that to do's. Change this to do do's. And then here. I'm going to just do a check to see if the local storage exists, if the local storage item exists. So dot get item to use. So if it does exist, I'm going to return it. It's this. But I don't want to return the streamified version. I want to return the first version. So to do that, if it doesn't exist, Awesome. So now, if I did this correctly, it should save. Oops. So let's say go to meetup. Boom, it's there. If I refresh, it should save. There it is. It's saving. But if I click this and refresh, it's not going to save. So what we need to do simply is add a function in our component file to um, update the to-dos array in our local storage when we make a change. So I'm going to say update to-dos. And literally all I'm going to do is just paste this. And then in here, in Angular, we can call a function after we change the state of the to-do. So I'm going to add a colon and paste that there. So when I click check, it's going to change the completed state to completed, and then it's also going to call this update to do's function, which is going to pass in the to do's array to local storage so it will save. So let's try it. So if I click this and refresh, it stays there. And now the delete's not going to stay, so if I delete it, it'll still be there. It's the phantom to do item. So uh, let's do the same thing. So since we already made the function there, all we have to do is paste it after we have this click function on the delete. 
So let's add a few. Test, delete, refresh, up there, delete, up there. So let's say it's pretty simply we can do that. Okay, so that's the basic functionality of our app. And um, one cool thing we can do is go to Google Fonts and we can choose a font. I like this one. And then if we look at this link here, it's the same exact one that's, that, that's importing our icons, except for the family is material icons instead of the family being uh, Mandela here. So with one request, I can add a bang here and then paste in the name of the font and of course, and it'll actually bring in that font as well. So not only is my code cleaner, but I'm making uh, less requests. And then I will, I'm gonna set up a global style here to import the fonts and we should have a prettier app. There we are. So we can make this even prettier by adding some mobile capability to it, because right now we just add a bunch of to-dos, um, and we look at a mobile browser, it kind of gets messed up, right? So one way we can do that very simply, like I said, it's the easiest grid ever, is, I'm going to reference this real quick, add a media query, and when we hit 800 pixels on our screen, um, we're going to, instead of the row is display block, we're going to just display, or sorry, the row is display flex. Once we get to 800, we're going to just display block. And then I'm going to remove, why oh, don't we have any margin here? Um, which is essentially the margin. Just for something we'll add later. Awesome. So now this should be mobile compatible. So, and then I also want to. Add an H2 here to center this. So now my um, H2 tags and my H1 tag is centered. And then this is kind of janky with the you know the ordered lists and lists. Like we're a pretty good developer. We don't need to you know be using that. So let's go shopping on Angular Material. And they actually have um, a really cool like clean looking list we can use. Um, so I'm going to use that. So I can go click list here. I'm going to click API. I'm going to import this map list module. And then part of this divider, so this divider right here, so that this is a list item, which we just imported, and then this divider is a divider, so I also have to import the divider. So, okay, so now we can kind of look at this code and kind of like copy and paste it. So we, got, we have a map list, would be our UL, so I'm going to replace in our uh, HTML component, I'm going to replace the UL with the map list. Not that UL. Oops. And then close this out. Okay, and then I'm going to replace the map list item or the uh, the LI. All right, that looks way cleaner, right? Way cleaner, but still it could do some work. Like I feel like this trash can, they could all align properly on the right, just like these are aligned properly on the right. So I have some special CSS here. Cool, so now they align on the right. And the way I did that, there's this class map list item content, which does not exist in my code here, right? I don't think I have any classes at all. But if we look in the rendered Angular uh, DOM, we can see that there are extra classes that it makes for us. Um, map list item content, is that it? Map 
the assignment content. So the only way you can change the generated Angular uh, DOM is from this global style CSS file. If I put the same code, this is interesting, if I put the same code inside of here, the way we have it set up, um, it wouldn't make the change. See how the buttons went back? So I'm gonna want that in this file. Oops. There, awesome. Now what happens if we have like a really long to-do? It totally breaks our UI, right? Awful. We can fix that too. Like this should be wrapping, right? And Angular Material is not smart enough to wrap this. So what I did was I inspected it. I was like, what? Why is this doing what it's doing? Okay. That looks okay, okay. So I'm kind of like looking at the DOM here, how it's set up. And then I'm going to add another CSS um, override, you could say, that's going to make this wrap. So now. Sorry, I can like put up the completed code, but uh, pretty simple, good-looking Angular to-do app that you can code in like 30 minutes. So, and then of course, if you want to plug in, you know, different things or just um, customize it, you can. So, any questions? Yeah. So, when you're creating a component, say you wanted another smaller component, like you have two lists rendering essentially the same right. things, which is a little redundant. Yep, it is. How would I question. use another component and reference it inside of like my to-do HTML? Great, great question. So I could say NGGC uh, completed. Ooh, and this is going to, I should have put that in my components folder here, but uh, so we have this component here, right? Completed works, let's say that's our completed list. Um, we just look at this selector and then we can paste this literally anywhere and add it in. So let's say this was our completed list. We could say boom, whoops, like that. And then it'll show up right here. So completed works. Another cool thing is you would want to be able to pass in like, hey, I want this one to be a completed one, or I want this component to be our uncompleted one. You can do this and say uh, completed. equals and then like a variable. And then within here, you could access that variable. So this code, essentially like we wouldn't have to duplicate this code here. So we would have this code in this file and then um, we would just pass in that true or false variable um, into this ng input right here. So we could do that very easily. Michael? When you had originally created the, that component, you used like the CLI, yeah. ng, g, c, yep. component, slash, whatever. Um, is that CLI doing anything in particular, build-wise, or is that just creating like a, a commonly used uh, convention for those uh, component structures? So yes, it actually does. Um, if you look at the app module, Every component that we added via the command line is here. Mm -hmm. So see this completed component I just added? It automatically adds it to here. And then that rebuilds it with that component. And also like our to-do component is there too. So it actually does uh, like change the build. Cool. So right here, any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> or like make make to do app. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Thank you everyone. It was really fun. Thank you. Yes. Hope you learned some Angular. Oh wait, I have one more slide. Go forth and make Angular apps. <laughs> awesome. Um, does anyone have any announcements? Did you? You had positions available, right? When I yes. To the first time. Do you want to talk, Michael? I feel like I've been doing all the time. <laughs> um, Zoom is hiring. 
uh, and um, also Zoom's hiring for like so Tommy and I give our our, our shtick about what we do. Um, what I love about our role is that we are uh, we help people build things. Um, if that's something that you like doing, like would love to, to talk. Um, and it's a fantastic company. Uh, also, uh, Tommy and I just like I think recently made the shift from uh, like I don't know we we're, were also like went through the broad well, sales for myself. Like I went from the like job search recently. So if like and I love those conversations about like what can I do to find the type of role I'm looking for. So if that's something you wanna like I don't know if if there's any sort of advice I can give, happy to. Yeah. So. Uh the, the roles we're hiring for um, developer advocates, so like us, we were coded before this, and then we moved into this sort of developer advocate role, which is coding and like talking, working with customers, helping people integrate with Zoom, and then integrating with Zoom. And this, more specifically, we're looking for a desktop or mobile SDK developer. So if you know any like Swift or uh, like one of those native languages or other frameworks that wrap those, uh, that'd be great to to, to talk about. So yeah. Anybody else have any personal announcements? Meet up you love to go to? Cool. Well, one more hand. Tommy. Thank you. And again, not one next month because it'll be July 4th, but uh, hopefully we'll see you in August for Ember. Mm. Fingers crossed. Yeah. We're still <laughs> speaker, but yeah. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Hey Tommy, are yes. you, you said you were going to post the code up, where could we find that? So, are you on the meetup? Like um, your yep. Link to the meetup? I can post it on the